Hey everybody, it's Tamara from Moogly, and I am coming to you today with the October 2019 live video. And let me put that down. As you can see, I am standing up today because I want to go over something that has been a reader request for a little while now. Scarf styling, how to wear crocheted, and for that matter, knitted and store-bought scarves. Um, there are several different styles that I like to use. Um, you might see some of them in my patterns, some of them I just tend to wear myself, so I'll be showing you those today. Before we get started with that though, I want to go over a few other things that have been happening on Moogly in the past month to get you guys all caught up. Now, um, I'm going to try and get the video to show up here on my laptop as well so that I can see your comments. Always a little bit of a challenge to make sure that the live things show up while you're actually live. Um, let's see, oh, there it is, live now it says. So I will go ahead and click on that and make sure I don't have my volume on and we'll be all set. I'll be able to see your comments now. So thank you so much for tuning in. Um, please do leave a like or a comment to let me know that you're watching. I really do appreciate it. And with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Now, there were three new patterns they came out on mooglyblog.com this past month and all of them now have video tutorials. Number one was the Ripley shawl, which you can see right here. There we go. This was the Moogly Fall Crochet Along for 2019. So this pattern was released in three pieces with three separate video tutorials. And if you follow the links in the descriptions, um, follow the link in this description, you'll get the links for everything that I'm talking about today. Um, but if you've already watched this on YouTube and you follow those links back through those individual videos, um, you can get to the Ravelry listing, which has it now as a paid whole PDF if you don't want to jump around to all the blog posts. Um, but otherwise, it is completely free on the blog and will be as long as I can keep Moogly running. So that is the Ripley Shawl. And that was made with Red Heart It's a Wrap Sprinkles. This one is a different colorway, as you can see, than the one I used, but it's really pretty. There's some really great choices. And I just wanted to point out, if you don't like the sprinkles colorways, they don't appeal to you, check out the It's a Wrap Rainbow. Totally interchangeable for this pattern. Use whichever one you like. So pick out your favorite and go from there. Let's see. Oh, good. Hello, 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 everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. I see your comments. Thank you. Um, so after the Ripley shawl was the Playoff Poncho which I have right here. I'm actually standing up so I can hold it up, hopefully nice and big here. There we are. And it's, yeah, if I can hold it up here, you can see there's a little bit of a mock turtleneck to this one. Um, sits pretty low though, it's not too much, it's not too heavy. Um, but this is a really, really warm piece. This was made with Red Heart Heat Wave. Let me grab some of that yarn right here. And Red Heart Heat, we Heat Wave, excuse me, is now available in stores and it is amazing. It heats up up to 12 degrees Fahrenheit within 10 minutes of being exposed to UV light. Um, that's assuming you're in that UV light the whole time. You can't just run outside and run back inside and expect it to keep heating up. You have to stay under the light. Um, but then when you come back inside, it'll start cooling down within about two minutes. And I've heard a lot of concerns about this, but I can tell you what makes it work is a fiber that's woven in. There's no metal or anything like that inside the yarn. There's also no harm harmful um, chemicals. You don't have to worry about this one. It is Ocotec certified, which means it's been tested for over 300 different chemicals, and it is totally safe for babies, for people, for whoever you want to use it with. So that's fantastic. Um, oh, and also, before I forget, there is a giveaway going on. It'll be ending soon because we're switching to a new month, but that is going on right now on mooglyblog.com too. So again, go to the link in the description for the link to that giveaway. Two other giveaways going on this month, as long as we're on the giveaway track is um, another one, the baby, try this again, Babe Crochet Hat Templates. These are great. If you make top-down hats, all of these are the different sizes, huge range of sizes, totally customize your hat creations. I used them when I designed the third pattern that came out this month, which was the Huga Cloud Hat right here. It's a bit of a slouchy hat, so it's a little bit longer than the template, um, but it's very flexible like that. And this one is sized to fit teens to adults. It's super stretchy, so I was able to have one really general size, but you can um, stop increasing at the top and just work the sides sooner if you want to make a smaller size. It's a very flexible pattern. Like I said, a lot of stretch in this brim, so you can get a couple different range sizes um, you know, at different points wherever you want to stop in that pattern. And it has a matching scarf, which you can see on the mannequin right here. This is the Huga Cloud Super Scarf, and that's what I'll be demonstrating our scarf styling tips with here in just a few minutes. 
Before I do that, though, I do want to point out there's one more giveaway going on on Moogly right now. And I always like to tell you guys about them because here on YouTube, you might not see them. Um, the Knitter's Pride Rainbow Knit Blockers. I'm giving away a box of these. These are phenomenal. Um, I go over them more in the Facebook video I did this morning. And also, um, of course, in the giveaway itself. I've got some great close-up pictures of these. But these are phenomenal. They are one of my new favorite um, tools for crochet, for knitting. They make blocking just that much easier and that much quicker and that much better. You get really great straight lines with these. So I highly recommend these, even if you don't want to enter the giveaway. If you're looking for something to buy, a little gift for yourself, or something to put on your wish list this year, I would recommend adding these for sure. So let's see. What is the measurement for guys' hats? Um, Let's see. Sorry, I'm trying to answer a couple questions here. Um, well, they've just got it medium, large, and extra large adult, which I which I respect as someone with an extra large head myself. Um, it goes all the way up to 24 and one quarter inches. So that's a pretty good sized head. That will definitely fit most. Um, and of course, if you need to go a little beyond that, you absolutely can. Um, the youngest one, the smallest one I should say in the set uh, would be for a preemie less than two pounds. So you can see the difference there. This is the little preemie size. And then here we have the large adult size. So quite the range 16 total sizes in the set and I am giving away an entire set and this one is open worldwide so be sure to enter that giveaway if you can let's see all right thank you so much guys all right so let's see what else did I want to mention today um knit stars 4.0 it's the last day to sign up for that one so again go to the link in the description I've got a link out to that with a lot more information more than I can go over here today um I was in knit stars 2.0 it was phenomenal you can also purchase those past events if you're interested in those. Um, some phenomenal people involved in those. Marleybird is doing Knit Stars 4.0, so definitely check that out. Again, link at the link in the description. Um, and then, yeah, that is it before we get to scarf styling. Kind of a quick rundown. If you want more info on any of those and some of the sneak peeks for next month, do check out the Facebook Live I did this morning at the link in the description. So let's see. Sorry, I have to lean down a little bit since I'm standing up to see you guys' comments. So, all right, thank you. Okay, looks like we're all caught up. So let's get to scarf styling. Now, there's a lot of different ways to wear crochet scarves. Um, of course, there's the standard. You can just drape around your neck or toss one end over your shoulder. But just like with fabric scarves, there are some fun ways to wear them. So I thought I'd go over some of those today. I have my big, thick uh, Huga Cloud Super Scarf right here made with Red Heart Huga, which I love. And then I have also this thinner scarf that I made using Red Heart Melange, uh, Roll With It Melange, I should say. It's one of their newer yarns, so it hasn't gotten a whole lot of publicity yet, but it is very pretty, and it's available on the Yarnspirations.com website. I did forget to put a link to this yarn in the blog post, but I will be doing that as soon as this live is over. Um, this pattern is not yet available on Moogly. Uh, it was for an event that I did, but it will be available next fall. So this is just, I'm using this one today to help demonstrate some of the, how these looks look with a thinner scarf. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's do, let's go ahead and do the thin one first since I've already got it down off the mannequin here. Now, like I said, your basic way for wearing a scarf, you know, most people, you know, you wrap it around the neck and then of course, in all the world pictures, you see just one jaunty end over the shoulder. But my personal favorite way to wear it, sort of halfway between a scarf and an infinity scarf. I really like that look. So I tend to just wrap, wrap it around like this. Yeah, glance down into the monitor here so I can see what I'm doing. Oops, see, I'm going the wrong direction. There we go. So this is honestly my favorite way typically to wear a scarf. I just kind of call this one the big wrap. Now, Another way that I do tend to, especially when it's very chilly, which it has been lately, oddly enough, we actually had snow yesterday, you guys. I don't know if you guys are getting snow where you are, but I am not a fan of snow before November. So if we fold the scarf in half, I've got the end, the folded end, I guess, in this end, and the two ends in this hand, just wrapped around my neck and send those two ends through the loop, just like that. And this is genuinely how I tend to wear a lot of my scarves. Um, just easy, it's simple, it looks a little more elegant, a little more, and it doesn't come off, you know, it doesn't blow away in the wind, like so. Probably bad, I guess, if you got into a fist fight. Don't get into fist fights. All right, so what else? Let's see. Oh, the pretzel wrap. It's kind of what I call it. I've seen a couple different uh, scarf styles called the pretzel wrap, but this is, this is the one I'm going to call the pretzel wrap. So we take, just like before, I've got the folded hand here. It doesn't matter if, which side, if you're right-handed, left-handed. I've got the folded 
half right here, I've got my two ends on this side, I'll send one end through. And then what I'm going to do, you can see sort of how it's laid here, I want to pull this one up and pull that end through from underneath. And I'm gonna show these again on the big scarf here in a minute. And then you get this really nice sort of braided look right there. All of these do tend to take a little bit of length, of course. Um, the fancier the wrap, the more you do to it, the more of a length of scarf you're gonna need, which is one of the reasons I really like wearing the super scarves. So let's see. Then if we go back to sort of the big wrap around, like so, then of course some people like to tie these two ends in a knot. And those two knots could, that knot rather, could go under. Let's see. Kind of got to look in the mirror here to make it zhuzh. There we go. You could put it under or, depending on the look you like, do it right on top. Again, different scarves are going to work better with different styles, but that's sort of the basics of that one. Two different ways to do that one. And then I have to keep checking my notes. I have so many different ways. Oh, this one's fun. Just wrap it around your neck once like so, sort of like a stole. And then I'm going to make one end a little bit longer and I'm going to tie a knot in that one. And I like to make sure that the end goes down in when I tie that knot. Then I will just go ahead and slip this end right into the knot. And when I tighten that one up, like so, and I can pull on that end and almost, almost like a little sort of a boyfriend, big boyfriend necktie type look. There we go. And you can keep playing with that a little bit, straighten it out if you want to and make that one just as fun as you like. All right, then let's see, got three, actually four more to go. And again, I will go over these again. I know I'm doing them quick. I'm gonna do them again on the big scarf as well. This one I call the cowl, sort of making a cowl out of your scarf. You just wanna leave a little bit of end here, wrap it however many times you can with your scarf. That's gonna depend on the length of your scarf. And then I just tuck those ends right between the layers there like so, oops, this one's peeking out on me. Mirrors are helpful. There we go. And it looks like a cowl. So that's another look. Then let's see. This one is sort of, this one I've also seen called the pretzel. Um, some people, you know, I don't know if the end result, I'm not an, um, a knot tire, you know what I mean? I don't do a lot of like fancy knots and things. So I'm always curious if this ends up being in the end really similar to the other pretzel one I showed you. but. We're gonna start the same way. Fold on one side, two ends on the other. And just as before, I'm going to send one end through. But this time, instead of picking that end up, I'm going to take it and just flip it and then send the second end through. So I think it turns out a little differently, but in the end, it might be just two different ways to get the same effect, but it's another sort of braided look to your scarf. And then the last two, sort of variations on each other, we're gonna start again with the big wrap. We just wrap it around once like that. We've got our two ends. And then you can take those two ends and either send them from the top through twice on each side, like so. Kind of give those a tug like that. Almost like a little necklace right there. Or if I pull these back out, like so, you can do it from underneath. Just do it from the other direction. It gives a slightly different look. So like one and two, pull those into the middle and another scarf look. So those are, I think it's, I wrote down 10, but I think there was actually 11 different styles there. So you've seen how they look with the skinny scarf. So let me take this off and we'll do it again with the big one. Let me just check the comments here. So let's see, no snow in Oklahoma, let's see. Oh gosh, and yes, for everybody who's suffering with the fires right now, my heart goes out to you. I cannot imagine. I have a friend who's been out of power for four or five days now, and it's just, it's so tense. And certainly if I could send you guys the snow, I would. All right, let's go ahead and get that big scarf. Okay, now this is the Huga Cloud Super Scarf. Again, it is linked at the link in the description. This one is a big boy. It is, I want to say, almost 100 inches long. And as you can see, it is quite wide. Don't really remember off the top of my head. I'm gonna say 10 inches or so. 
So this one with a little more scarf, it can be a little more difficult to do some of the styles, but also give some other possibilities. So let's just look at those um, 10 or 11 styles again and see how they look here. This is probably my favorite size to wear too. I know the skinny scarf, scarf is supposed to be coming back in right now, but I really do like these big super scarves. So this is the basic big wrap, very popular, probably one of my faves. And then we've got, oops, giving my mannequin an elbow there. So if we do the fold in half, we can wrap it around and send those two ends through. Sort of our, it's super cold, I need this to stay put. I don't need to be fancy, I just need to be warm and cozy. Another great look, I love this one. Then let's see if we can pull off the pretzel with this one. It is, like I say, it's a big scarf, so we'll get ourselves arranged here. Okay, we've got our loop on this end. Send this end through, put it down to the bottom. So we can pull this end up. This time we're gonna go under that side and over the other side, like so. There we are. That's the one. Ah, Ariella, Ariella, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Starting to flurry here in Des Moines. Yeah, we had it in Bettendorf yesterday, so we'll see if we get it back today. I know we're supposed to have some more tomorrow night. So that is sort of the pretzely one. I love this one in this scarf in particular. Then let's see. The next one might be a little harder when you've got your big scarves like this. If we do our big wrap and tie our ends, there we are, it's gonna be a big knot. So like I say, not every style is gonna work with every scarf and that's okay. We can tie our knot, try and sort of tuck it underneath here. It might actually be bigger, or easier rather, since this one is so wide. That one's kind of a nice look right there. Or tuck it back on the outside here. Even turn it off to the side a little bit, sort of jaunty. There we go. So um, let's see, what else? There's the tie the knot on the one side. So again, that's one where we keep the first side short on the longer side. This might be a little too short since it's such a big scarf. I'm gonna tie our knot, send that end through the same knot, tighten it up a little bit here. There we go. So definitely a big, big knot with this guy. But if I straighten that out here, Kind of a different look for this one, a little fun, might be a little bulky. Let's see, and then the next one was just one big tie. Again, this is probably going to be very big for this, but we'll try it like so. And then I've seen a lot of people when they do the one big tie like this, they will, let me get that arranged there, sort of blouse out the two ends right there for a slightly different almost like a like a long bib type look. <laughs> Let's see, um, the cowl, the long wrap with the ends tucked in. We'll see if that works with this one. I was trying it last night, and when you've got tassels and palms and things on the end, this one can be a little trickier. But essentially, it's just real short ends. So you could just leave it at this point if you like to, too. Or go ahead and tuck those ends up in to the scarf. Let's see if I can find it there, there we go. Get, oh, one tried to escape on me. There we go. So this is sort of a big bulky cowl look. I really love this one in this pattern, actually, now that I'm seeing it. <laughs> I really like this one. I hope you too. Um, let's see. And then we've got just a couple more here. We go to that second pretzel style with our fold on one side and our two ends on the other. We send that first end through the loop and then take the bottom of the loop and just twist it either direction. Play with both, see what you like. Pull that end through there. There we go. That one's kind of interesting too. Gives it just a little more action and interest up front. And then of course, our last two. If I can find my way out, <laughs> we'll do our big wrap like so. And then we can take those ends and I don't know, it's so bulky. I don't know if it'll go through twice well or not. We'll try it. This time I'm coming from sort of underneath. There we are. So there's that way. And if I send them both back through here and keep going the other direction, do it from the outside. See if I can get one more twist on there. 
And with a really thin scarf, if it was really, really drapey thin material, you might even do two or three times or four times, just depending on what you've got to work with for this one. There we go. Sort of like a big necklace again. You can obviously adjust that for length if you want it closer, pull it out further if you want something longer, and really just play with it and make it your own. So anyway, those are 10 or 11 ways that I like to wear my crocheted and knitted scarves. Um, even just the ones I buy from the store. I love scarves. I think they are such a great accessory and can really liven up your look. Um, here, like I say, it's getting chilly, so I've already been trying to steal this one and sort of wear it in my office a little bit. Um, I will definitely be wearing it outside here in the next week unless we have some crazy warm up. Um, so yeah, that is the basics of how I wear scarves. Let me go ahead and check your comments here. Let's see. Oh my gosh, yes, everybody's Everybody's having some weather these days. I guess it is the season for it, isn't it? Let's see. Oh, thank you so much, guys. Let's see. Lisa wants to know if I have any videos explaining how to read graphs. Um, I'm guessing you mean charted instructions as opposed to um, like corner to corner graphs, which are like pixel graphs. Um, the fun thing about, I know this is a little off topic, but I'll go ahead and answer it. The fun thing about crochet stitch diagrams with the little, like, looks like a bunch of T's and pluses and ovals and things like that, if that's the kind you're talking about, um, the great thing about those is you don't need to um, worry about being right or left handed. You just sort of follow the directions. Now, if it's something where the direction you're working in is going to have an effect on the pattern, that can certainly be more complicated. Um, and then you may be able to work the graph the opposite direction. You kind of have to play with it yourself a little bit. Um, it's just going to depend. There's so many factors. Um, in terms of reading the actual symbols, of course, they tend to be the same whether you're right or left-handed. I'm not left-handed myself, um, although I do do the left-handed videos. Um, with, that's a little bit of technical trickery. I don't actually crochet left-handed, um, so I always have to stop and think about it a little bit. Um, but I think for the most part, you can try reading them, you know, whether when it's pointing one direction or the other, you're going to flip your work when you're working back and forth in rows. So that arrow might be pointing one direction. You follow the chart that direction, but you don't necessarily have to be crocheting that direction because the next one's going to be, you know, wrong for 50% of the population anyway. You're going to flip it. It's going to show working back the other direction, but of course you're going to keep crocheting the direction you normally crochet. I hope that makes sense. Sort of a spontaneous answer there. Let's see. Um, all right. Debbie wants to know, what is the name of the pattern? This one is the Huga Cloud Super Scarf. It is free on mooglyblog.com, and it is linked at the link in the description. And this is the one that has the matching hat right here. Oh, at the risk of messing up my hair day, <laughs> I will go ahead and put the hat on here. So there we are. Bit of a slouch totally matches the scarf you can make the set it's getting warm <laughs> it is very warm very cozy um so you can make the set as gifts for yourself whatever it's just a really fun set to make this year and of course this is using red heart huga um gives it this really great fuzzy squish and i love this yarn because it's fuzzy um but it's not that hard to see your stitches a lot of times with fuzzy yarn um, especially if you're an experienced crocheter a lot of times with fuzzy yarn um you know you have to really stare at it and you're like oh my gosh kind of guess, you know, just by spacing where your hook's supposed to go. And those are fun too, but this stuff you can still see your stitches in, so that's really nice, but it's still got that really furry, gorgeous look. So let's see. Um, Nancy wants to know, I'm going to my first craft show in February. What should I crochet? That is a great question. Um, you know, and it's hard to predict what's going to be a big hit every year. I think that this year what I've been seeing a lot of, and I... I don't sell at craft shows, so I can only tell you what I've been seeing people making for their craft shows. Velvet scrunchies. The um, the velvet yarn. Uh, there's Bernat Baby Velvet, Bernat Velvet, Bernat Crushed Velvet. I think I have some of that here behind me somewhere. There it is. Here. The skeins get a little messy on the shelf, unfortunately, but it is gorgeous stuff. Here is their Bernat Velvet. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at that color. And um, I will tell you, I'm doing a video, a yarn love video, and a pattern and a giveaway for the Bernat Baby Velvet, little sneak peek here, in November. Um, and in that yarn love video, I'm going to have some really good tips for working with this yarn. 
It's um, it requires just a few other tricks and things that you wouldn't use normally um, for necessarily for other yarns. You just have to handle it a little differently. It's a unique yarn. It's um, a really fuzzy, basically chenille. Um, gives it that great, gorgeous feel. But you'll want to treat it just a little bit differently than you might otherwise. But I have definitely seen a lot of scrunchy patterns out there using the velvet yarns already. And I have seen so many people making those for the craft shows. And I will tell you, my 18-year-old still wears one on her wrist. Um, I'm seeing them in stores now. I noticed when I was grocery shopping yesterday, there were some sort of velvet-looking scrunchies out there. So I think that's going to be a really big, low-price, um, quick-grab intro item for a lot of craft fairs this year. But... We'll have to wait and see. If you guys have any other tips, if you guys sell in craft fairs, please do leave those in the comments so that everybody can learn what's working this year because, of course, it changes from year to year. Let's see. So, okay. Uh, let's see. Rhonda wants to know, I know how to crochet, but I'm not great at Do you have any teaching videos on how to read a pattern and how to sharpen your technique? Well, I would say in terms of sharpening te your technique, it's mostly practice, practice, practice. Um, learning to read your stitches and really paying attention I find to the structure of the stitch itself like when you make sit and make a single crochet a half double crochet a double crochet and as you're making it see where each of those strands lands in the finished stitch that can be really informative in helping you read your work um, and really those stitches go very well so let's see all right